Welcome to the Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioner's meeting on April 24th, 2024 at 6 p.m. 6.01 p.m. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should plan for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. Pursuant to General Laws Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to our clerk, Trevor McDaniel, and provide their name and address for the record. Thank you. So I'm calling us to order. Is there any public comment? Okay. Um, so I do have a, one announcement. I just want to say um, the 350th met last night. We have decided the time capsule is going to be over by the Bloody Brook Memorial, um, right by Frontier. Oh, yeah, that's good. Um, we're going to have that happening on May 11th, followed by a luncheon at Frontier um, for anyone that wants to participate. And um, this, oh, they're going right. to put the bench. Um, you'll see two little stakes. The mm -hmm. bench is going to go there, and the time capsule is going to be buried right behind it. Nice. Uh, Peter Thomas had very nicely um, volunteered to um, do the uh, archaeological um, hand digging of the where the time capsule is going to go, so there's right. no issues because it yep. is a historic site, right. and he is, of course, certified. And um, to do that kind of stuff, he did that for FEMA. Do you know what time you're going to do that? Yes, okay. and it will be at either 11 or 11.30. Okay. We don't yeah, I'll put 11, just to have Yeah, just phone. to have 11. Okay. Um, we, we just have to confirm yeah, the kit. Yes, and advertise. Kate, yes, and, and, advertise. Um, and then uh, there's going to be plantings. That tree uh, there is, of course, dead. And is dropping big branches, so we got to get that taken down. But we're going to plant uh, sustainable plants, native mm -hmm. plants around there, and shrubbery. Hopefully, we can work with the conservation district to come up with some planting money, and they're going to um, restore that planting, the old fountain mm -hmm. that has a bit, is like a circle flower bed. It's going to be. Uh, just fixed up a little, so the okay. whole, the whole, and and friends of Deerfield are going to clean the monument. Mm -hmm. So this is like so yeah, exciting. Great. So we'll have that bench there, and we'll have the monument cleaned, and so I feel it was really exciting. That'll be nice. Yep. So that was a positive thing. Yeah, so news. next item on the agenda is review and approval of the memo to assessors uh, requesting abatement for fiscal 24. Um, for 83 to 85 North Main Street, effective for the period of April 22nd through June 30th, uh, pursuant to General Laws, Chapter 59, Section 72A, and I assume that's because we now own the property. Correct. We're asking, the memo is to request that the assessors abate the real estate taxes from the date of the taking to the end of the fiscal year. Okay, perfect. So if you guys are okay with it, I will send it to them. Sounds All right. good. Do you want to vote? Yeah, we need them. Yeah, if yeah. you want to. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, request to the assessors to abate the property taxes. Second the motion. All those in favor? Tim Helchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you very much. Uh, next item on the agenda is the police chief's request for a full-time police officer appointment. I'm um, excited about this one. This yeah, me really too. Really um, nice. It's Tanner Finch, and I'll just read what John has written up. Yeah. Uh, it says, Dear Board, Honorable Board, I'm respectfully requesting Tanner Finch to be appointed as a full-time police officer, effective May 13th, 2024 in accordance with the union contract at $25.93 an hourly wage. If authorized and voted, Tanner will start the full-time police academy in Holyoke on Monday, May 13th, and graduate on Friday, October 18th. He will then start a three-month field training uh, program 
The goal will be to have Tanner covering shifts by year-end holiday season, which will be yep. fabulous. We will then need to explore placing a second candidate in the academy in no November, December. Tanner was born and raised in Deerfield, graduated from Frontier Regional High School, and, is, and was attending Springfield Technical Community College. Tanner is exceptionally polite, proactive, and a humble young man. I believe his drive and personality will serve the town extremely well for years to come. Please feel free to reach out if there's any questions at any time. Respectfully submitted, John Pachor, Chief of Police. To approve the request to appoint um, Tanner Fitch. I'll second it. Second it. Um, I just want to say I'm thrilled we have a good candidate because yes. it's hard hard, hard, hard to hard find good people. Really, and, and, and a young person is wonderful, yeah. and, a local, and a local young person. Yeah. So Love we're it. really happy. And um, so all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay, and then the item that we, let's just take care of the one unanticipated item. Yes. So that we can just now then focus on the um, and it warrant. should be towards the end. Support. Yes, what it is is the letter of support for the town of Waitley for the MVP action grant application. This is part of our um, Franklin Conservation District effort uh, to do um, the yard by yard lawn conversion program oh, because yeah. they have similar issues with mm -hmm. water. And um, they're going to approach this through the MVP grant and they are looking for us to support um, a letter for them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we just this yeah. letter of support. Make a motion to, to approve the letter of support to the town of Waitley for the no. MVP. No, I'll second it. And I will gladly ask for support. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And we hope that, that they suck up as much water as possible because it <laughs> takes more from Bloody Brook. Can we send them sponges? <laughs> yeah. That's right. Send us sponges across that We line. are very happy to participate. I don't want the water. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. It's wild, but Tim. true. <laughs> and there's just one other thing to sign, and that's the... Um, Warrant final page of the warrant. For the oh, book. okay. Yep. Um, okay, so now let's go over the warrant. Let's go over motions and talking points. Okay. Do you have a black one? I do, yep. I want to do it in red. Um, I did. <laughs> yeah, I get purple. Just I know, purple. I know. I didn't realize I had purple. Okay. It's okay. It proves that it's an original <laughs> signature. <laughs> That's how I look at it. Okay. okay. Uh, Article one. I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue. Nope. We can certainly talk to that. Um, yeah. So it's basically moving A through G. But one thing that I received a request for is to slightly change the language in the reference to the annual gift for Eagle Brook. Um, thanks, Tim. Um, does the board have an issue with that change? Because it's just a slight change to the table. So what did you change from the last What I time? changed was underneath renovations for the temporary library space, um, Eagle Brook School annual gift in appreciation of services rendered dedicated to construction. Was, oh, oh yeah. yeah that's no, that, if you guys fine. don't have a problem, nope. I'd like to replace nope. that. Fine. Nope. Okay. That's fine. All right. And so the rest of this, the rest of that article is the same. I only have one talking point to that, and that is that this combines several annual requests to expedite the business of town meeting. Um, article two, and this is Tim's motion. And so there's there's going to be some places where you guys can tell me if you want me to change things. I did my best to stick to things that I know are your particular bailiwicks. That's fine. Um, the. So Article 2, I have Tim moving it, and that's for reserve fund appropriation, which is $100,000 this year, um, OPEB trust appropriation, which I do put an explanation down in the explanation section about this just to make sure people remember. And then out of district placement is us, it's the representation of an estimate of two students plus transportation. Um, so it's 104000 and this was what was discussed during the budget review process. Um, but that question, that in case that question is the something... Only, you the remember. only thing I would add is um, you want to make sure that we um, 
just mention, I mean, if somebody questions the sum of 100,000, we're reducing that from 120. Mm -hmm. For the we, reserve fund? Yeah. Okay. In, in years prior, it was 120. So we are reducing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that fund is basically in case we have an unanticipated expense right. that it's we need to Right, it's the reserve fund for the, that the Finance Committee controls in case we have emergency expenses. Yes. It's like the buffer in your checkbook. Right. right. Yeah. Um, and what I'll say in the explanation for Smith Volk, I'm gonna, just going to say two students are anticipated. That's fine. I, I, think, I think you should say two students, the cost for two students with transportation, and the, just remember that we reduce free cash in case somebody wants to know why that is right. different. Okay. Um, Article three, I have Trevor making this motion and it's really Fine. to vote the maximum spending amounts for the revol revolving funds. Fine. Again, this is an annual vote, so I didn't put yep. much explanation in it. No worries. Um, Article four, okay. So this is what I wanted to explain to everybody. Last night at the hearing, um, and Trevor may have a question about this because he had a question during the meeting. Um, First of all, David Sharp is going to make the motion. Yep. Um, they made one small change in the text of the bylaw, and that was on in <coughs> item 35.5, or section 35.5, item A, after the word town administrator, about two thirds of the way down that paragraph, mm -hmm. they had me add or their designate. Because you might have Chris Nolan it, it, it or to attend. Yeah. yeah. In, in other words, for instance, if I if the town administrator couldn't attend a meeting or something, that the town administrator could designate the assistant town administrator, which I've done in the past. Or or any other. It, they could designate somebody or else. Sarah. Generally, it's probably going to be somebody like the assistant town administrator. Yep. But yes. So okay. they wanted that flexibility. No, um, that makes sense. They also chose to make sure that the in this version. The elected employee member is a voting member, except on the personnel review relations review board. Um, so most of the language is the same, except for that or their designate. Okay. Um, and the recommendation is carried at the bottom. Now I did some explanation on this, and then I remembered Trevor that. So Trevor had a question <laughs> last night, but Trevor made a comment to me, and that was keep it simple. So I tried. Um, it's it's because this is a lot. It isn't as simple as maybe you want it to be. And if you want me to pare it back, I can. No, it's fine. It's fine. But basically, I'm telling people that we're amending the current language to allow the town to create an administration system, change the composition of the personnel board, maintain the responsibility for wage review and classification of positions, um, clarify the roles of the personnel board and the select board in policy development. And this is where Trevor's question was. So in the text of the bylaw change, it does say that recommendations come from the personnel board. It, they can also come from two or more employees. Um, but the town, the select board has a, re, has a time frame with which to act on a recommendation once it's transmitted, and that's 45 days. Um, so we need an either up or down vote on that because I thought they said, well, if the select board doesn't act, then it automatically comes It does. Comes it does. Into play. It does say that. And I said, well, then we need to really make sure that any changes that come up through, we need to act on either yay or nay on them so that we can, we don't wind up getting caught flat footed and forgot to talk about something and now all of a sudden it's, it becomes, you know, And I did Right, and I did tell them that normally I try to not do this in a vacuum. I try to include both boards in mm -hmm. things that we're talking about. Yeah. Um, so to the extent that the town administrator's responsibility as the ex officio member is to facilitate, that timeline needs to be in, in on the radar screen. But also, I think any policy that comes up should be communicated so that you see drafts coming through. And that's more of a process thing as opposed to a bylaw thing. Um, so I did want to I did want to bring that up so you could make your comment about it, Trevor. Mm -hmm. um, so where is this description? Thank you for coming because D. I had to go to the three fifty. So I was there for the comp schedule, but yeah, I yeah, I, I heard you head out. On. Yeah, I didn't want to. I was just doing some other work. It's in the motions after thirty five nine. 
Oh, good. So, there's an explanation. I just it says Article sure 4 explanation. D, under Section D? Yes. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, with the exception of sort of the comment back and forth that Trevor and I just had. Right. That's not there, but essentially I'm trying to recap some of the conversation that personnel so, board had. So how, um, when you talk about D, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, um, does that seem like it's written? I mean, that's reasonable. I think if they if they come up with something, we're usually involved in that. But, right. But they will, if the personnel board comes up with a policy change, they would send it to the select board. We have forty five days to think about it, discuss it. We can either vote up or no down. But if we don't take any action at all, then it, it goes it into effect. Goes uh, into effect. Okay. Right. So, and that's a that's not a that's a pretty common provision for a lot of different like the conservation commission, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, building permits. Well, it's it's, yeah. it's our comments. It's like yeah. when we get asked mm -hmm. for comments and stuff. Yeah. It okay. also this also def, uh, sort of redefines the the review process and hearings, right? And takes out the publication costs. Okay. okay. Good. Because that was one thing that it really has cost a lot of money when we've had to make changes to the class comp or in the bylaw, it costs a lot of money to do that. Yeah. And what's so silly is nobody reads the newspapers anymore. Anyway. <laughs> right, right. And the state oh, still so. hasn't been able to take that out, although I fingers know. crossed. So, all right. That seems and, uh, the, so the other thing I did, when, just so you know, and I explained this to them, I took all of our benefits and all of the policies that exist in the bylaw currently and I put it into a draft manual and I gave you a copy in your packet. It's not perfect, it won't be perfect, but to Margaret's question at our last joint budget meeting, it gives us a place to start and I will make sure Margaret sees it tomorrow. Um, so they, made, they recommended this um, and I just wanted to give you sort of the brief outline because Carolyn came to the beginning of the meeting but she wasn't able to stay because she had 350. Um, are there any questions that you think will come up that maybe a talking point would help? I think you should generate one or two for us. Because I have some of it in the explanation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are we still talking about four? four. Yes. Yes. Um, so not, not, you don't have, just think about it. You just, you should just. Just you could email it to us or something. Well, they'll be in the motions. If there's something, if there's something you think of that you think I should address, let me know. Um, we've had this conversation a couple of times with the personnel board, and I think David's prepared to talk to it. Mm -hmm. um, I have not asked him if he has specific comments, but often when you guys have specific comments, you say them, yeah. and they aren't necessarily in the text of explanation. These comments are like the current bylaw is out of compliance with the state law. Yes. Therefore, we need to change it. Yes. We also want to um, create a bylaw that can be easily adapted as the state changes laws, and yes. it doesn't require us to go back to the legislature and wait several months before we know whether the law has been... Right. It allows us to put things in place that come up as they change. And so the legal, the, the fact that we're legally out of, not compliant is the main reason, and I can make that the main talk, that first talking point. Well, I think that should be the first talking point because okay. that's the whole reason we're doing it, basically. I mean, truly. Okay. Um, all right. So Article 5 is the class comp, and Carolyn was at the meeting for this. Um, David's going to make the motion. They had a change to the classification compensation and what plan and what they did was they took the position of EMS chief off the direct section of the plan, so it's out of G, grade G, but referenced all the, and, and this is consistent with contracts that exist for these types of positions, so the town accountant, budget director, town administrator, police chief, and in this case, the idea was my part of my explanation was to continue to be consistent with other jobs, but also their rebuttal to me was, well, we need to make sure that these jobs are recognized as part of as being classified. Um, so they wanted a notation on here that shows the contracts and the positions that are related. So you'll see that there's four notations. 
you have the police chief and the EM, EMS chief through GL chapter 41. Yeah. 41 1080, which is the public safety, and then GL 41 108 N, which is the town administrator, town accountants. Uh, contract section. So what I did was I just put the notation in like they asked me to and I removed the EMS chief from the list. That was the only change. And then I had a brief explanation about it. If you think it needs to be pared down, send me an email or let me know after the meeting. Okay. I, I, I just... I think when David my will comment, probably speak My to comment that. when I was at the meeting was that it just should be consistent and it appears to be consistent now, so that's good. So Article 6... And I've got Carolyn doing this motion. Um, and this is the funding for the FY 2024 shortfall for snow and ice removal. And I did clarify it, Lisa's request. So it's 30,000 from vocational ed. Um, and I talked to Brenda about my explanation point and that was basically money was available in this account to fund the shortfall. Um, because do we, we, do we know that um, 30000 is, in fact, enough for all the bills? Have the bills it's come in? in? We've, it's, it's close. If we have to make a smaller transfer from um, reserve fund, we can. But okay. she and I estimated it'll be around there. She still knows that she's got two bills outstanding. Okay. Um, so we made an educated guess. All right. Um, Article 7. I don't know how much how many questions are going to be around this because we pretty much explain it what each bill is for my concern and Tim if you don't want to do this motion let me know I had you listed as doing this motion the biggest question I think is going to be the cost to pay the various employees at SCEMS for the overtime as required by Fair Labor Standards Act and so what I was trying to do in the explanation is sort of brief it um, Essentially, we became aware in March that overtime hadn't been properly yeah. calculated, yep. including the differential. And so I, I'm yes. struggling with how much detail to put in there and how much not. I think I can explain it. Okay. Short because sweet. I want to give something, but I don't want to go too far. Trevor. It's less than $400. Yeah, it's, it's... It's less than $400. I mean, it's really Short not that sweet. much. Yeah. But somebody may ask what the F FLSA thing was, and then that's can that. overtime yeah. includes shift that. differentials, and yeah. we just hadn't calculated them correctly. Okay. Um, but I did give them the background of what happened in case there's questions, because once we figured it out and had a method to fix it, we did it in the, in the most current payroll, and then we did the look back. And I wa also wanted to make sure that we recognized how much work that Josh and Sarah did by just referencing the position participation in in the whole explanation. If you want me to take that part out, I just it was a lot of work. So other than that, I don't know right. how many questions there will be on the other two no. bills. So I didn't really fill that in. That's fine. Okay. Um, article eight is opioid stuff the yep. opioid funds Fine. and i struggled to sort of come up with something except to give it background which is Fine. those funds rolled into free cash while we waited for the legislature to work with dls yep. or yep. dor um we could only hold those funds in stabilization accounts up to that point and this change creates more flexibility and allows the town to spend the funds for purposes outlined in the article we without we prior the appropriation moment. we don't have a it's going to sit there right now Right now, it's going to sit there, and that's probably the thing that, um, Carolyn, I, one of the reasons I gave you this article is because I know that you can speak to that in case yep. there's a question. Yep. So you All can right. say, right now, we have no activities or we're um, working on activities, whatever you want to say. Yeah. But at least there's a small explanation here. Yep. Um, okay, Article 9 is the budget. Okay. Fine. I have no explanation for the budget. <laughs> and I talked to Brenda about it. She's like, it's, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> pretty straightforward. Yeah. So the good news was is almost everything was in the warrant. So there, in terms of the questions you guys could see, we did our best to include all the funding yep. tables. Fine. So hopefully that settles people down. Yep. And they, aren't, they don't have as many questions. Um, 
And finance and select board agree on the whole budget. So Correct. We're good there. Finance and select board agree on the whole budget. Um, the other reason there's no explanation is Julie does that. We right. will include it in the guide and she's going to do a short presentation. That's perfect. Um, Article 10 is sewer enterprise fund. So I gave that to you, Trevor. Okay, that's fine. Um, and it's pretty self-explanatory, so I didn't give it any explanation. Nope, it's fine. It's good. Um, Article 11 is SCEMS, which I gave to Tim. Perfect. Um, you're the select board rep on SCEMS, so I figured you probably would want mm -hmm. to talk about that. Yep. Um, just in case you didn't notice, I put Josh, I asked Dan to put Josh on the moderator's motion to speak. Yep. Um, but I had forgotten Cassie, so when I send this out tomorrow, I will make sure that Dan knows. Um, okay. But Josh specifically wanted to be able to speak if he could, or if anybody had questions. Yeah, that's good. Um, okay. Article 12. Capital. Is FY 2024 capital for scams. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems pretty self-explanatory yeah. to me, so I didn't give it a yeah, lot of fine. explanation. And I gave this one to you, Carolyn, because A, you're on capital, and B, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you're also the fiduciary for the town. So yep. if you didn't want it, let me know now. No, 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 I'm fine. I, can, I think I can explain it to um, people fairly simply. Um, and if you want me to give you some explanation, I can do that. No, no. I, I went to every single meeting. I mean, one of the reasons that we did the funding source tables is to give people mm -hmm. some background. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Article 13. And you're going to see that there are some places where I haven't accepted changes because I want uh, Lisa and Dan to see them before we accept them. Um, Article 13 is the FY25 capital plan. So I noticed that I hadn't put some verbiage into the motion that says to fund the capital improvement plan for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, so I fixed that. Okay. Um, I don't have a lot of explanation because really there isn't much to say. Right. My only question to you as the select board that basically finalized what was in the warrant, yeah. do you want to include any other background? No. We'll just explain it if anyone has a question on any okay. of the items. Yeah. Um, yeah, article I, I, Tim, do you feel comfortable? Because I, I mean, I could, I could do yeah. that comp capital if you want. Well, it's do you fine with me. That? Yeah, I gave yeah. it. I was just sort of flipping through. Right. So okay. No, that's fine. They're all straightforward. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's there's hardly anything yeah. anyway, and there's nothing controversial. It's it's you know multi-year plan, um, and the funding sources are really right. outlined fairly Very straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing okay. really. Okay, I just, if you wanted. No, I'm fine. Okay. And, uh, I got plenty of notes is, if you needed it. Who's doing 14? You said Caswell? Who's Julie Caswell is doing it. Oh, she's, she's a member. Uh, yeah, yeah, so okay. she's Ka Ka the uh, vice chair of community preservation. Okay, Kathy's good. not around. Kathy's so in Africa. So I had a chance to talk to her Monday, and I told her I would send her the motions. Um, it really follows the table, so it should be fairly Yeah, and there are easy. no projects this year, so it's The only stable. explanation I have here, and this was after I talked to Brenda, is no specific projects were recommended for approval mm -hmm. at this town meeting, but at least one project may be presented at a fall town meeting. Okay. Which was actually a statement that Tim had made last week, I think. Yep. So I just wanted to capture that. Um, yep. Because, and you know, Julie can say whatever else she wants to say, but I thought for purposes of people reading this, they may want to know that. Okay. Um, okay, Article 15. Now, this is the quarterly tax yep. one. And I, That's fine. I struggled with who to give it to, but I figured I'm that. Happy to do it. I think some Makes of the sense. borrowing, like you understand how the cash flow, mm -hmm. not that we don't, but it, I just tag your it. I'm happy to do um, what it. What I tried to do was pare down some of that explanation. And essentially, after talking to Brenda, she basically said, make sure you, sh you give everybody the benefits to them first. And I wrote that down. Yep. This all comes from the information that we got from Sarah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have Sarah take a look at it, see if she wants me to pare anything down. It looks pretty, pretty good. Um, That's fine. Basically, we get... Essentially, the last two elements are the elements that are really the benefit to the town, which is provide stable cash flow so we can meet our monthly financial obligations and plan for larger expenditures. Yeah. And 
It is a significant change, so we seek to implement it in July of 2025 for fiscal 26. Yep. To give adequate time to right. notify people. Yep, that's fair. Mm -hmm. uh, so and so maybe I'll move that one talking point below the property owners thing. I'll switch that up a little bit. And then Satu is going to do the uh, library trustee. Okay, so Satu is going to do this. I don't really have a lot of explanation, but in an email exchange I had with Nancy Gap, Nancy Maynard, um, we are going to include their letter with explanation in the guide. Fine. So right. hopefully that helps. Should be but I'm sure Satu can explain it. Yeah. Too. Um, Seventeen. Seventeen well. is. This is community preservation committee. Um. This is to what? Julie's going to do this one too. The members is that, that adjusting the members? Yes. Okay. It's adjusting right. the members. We don't have a regional housing. That's easy enough. Okay. Yeah. This this basically seeks to create the ability for us to have a resident act in a capacity to promote affordable housing. Um, we don't have, a, and I, all I say in the explanation is we don't have a member because we're required to use the housing authority. Yep. Um, and or it, we're required to use the house, regional housing authority since we don't have our own housing authority. Um, and all, the only other thing I said was this: not having the seat filled creates quorum issues, which yeah. means they can't do their business. Which I think is the most simple explanation. Is there anything else you think I should add to it, Carol? No, but when you when you're talking about um, on the the. References, I mean, the only housing authority we have, because we're a small town, is a regional one. Right. right. And no one lives in town right. that is on the regional housing authority board. Right. I mean, that, and is willing to serve. If, if somebody was in town, lived in town, and was on the board, and was willing to serve on the CPC, it wouldn't be a problem. Right. But we don't have anybody on the regional housing board that lives yeah. in town. So, so it's stuff. very simple. Yeah, simple stuff. And, and this is how people have fixed it. Other small communities across Massachusetts had fixed it. Right. And so that, I mean, I think that's worth saying. Yeah. This is how small communities without their own individual housing authority have fixed right. the state legislation. No, it's good. And that's very simple. Okay. So that we can meet quorum. I mean, and again, that's a simple explanation. Yep, I'm fine with 18. Is easy enough. Unloading the property. Um, simple. I think, and we have a picture of the property. In the I do actually. Um, we'll put it in the guide. Yeah. We have a we have a uh, GIS snap of it, picture of it, but we also have. A reference from the unofficial property. Are card. we going to have any of this up on the board? Yes, oh, we're going to have to. So the guide's going to have to be. And this is what Chris is going to be doing. We have a projector now. We can yeah. Project and, yeah. Unless Frontier wants to do it, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. We and I was going to have Chris do that. Chris okay. Nolan. Great. Because this, you know, we turn the guide into an electronic document anyway, so Perfect. we can just scroll. That's great. Um. Article 19, I had you doing this motion, Tim, if you want to switch it around. 18? No, 19, I was doing, that's just the, the getting rid of the property. Oh, the, I'm sorry, 18 no. is, is yes. permission yeah, to change the use and sell the property. Yep. Right. Yep. 19 is. I didn't put an explanation in there. Do you think I, we I need, need anything? One. No, I can explain it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, and I have no problem doing 19. Yeah. Okay. So 19 plays into 20. And so you'll see that there's a question from Lisa Mead. We need to know the amount, not, not to confuse the two, but they relate to each other. Um, so if Article 19 doesn't pass, yeah. we have to maintain borrowing authority to pay the bills for the roads. Correct. So Lisa's comment is we need to know what the amount is or if it's going to be completely re uh, rescinded, the request is going to be to completely rescind. We won't know that until town meeting. So I'm going to talk to her and see how she wants to handle it. You mean it. If, if, if 600 doesn't pass, then we're, not going to, we're just going to pass over? Yeah, you would either have to pass over it or over only it. allow that 600,000. No, we're just going to pass um, over it. And then we'll, we'll decide. We'll talk about it. You guys talk about it. This uh, my is, view is that if if 19 does not pass and we don't have the money from there, we will pass over Article 20 completely 
and by the by fall we'll decide how much we're going to borrow you know because we it's sometimes silly to borrow six hundred thousand you may have to group in some other projects so I think I think it because there's a cost to borrow. there's a cost to there borrow. is definitely so a I think cost it, the smartest <laughs> plan is to is to fund it out of there but I think that we should pass over this article completely if it doesn't and then decide in the fall once we know all the bills are in and everything's paid up and we're done where we want to go from there and how much we need to rescind in the fall but it, somebody else has a, another point of view I don't, I, that too. that's why we're talking <sighs> I don't know. I mean, there are two options, right? One is you. that if, if, if the voters decide in their wisdom that they would rather not spend money that we on, have on hand and retain a borrowing authority of $5 million, then that's the decision they're going to make. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense to me, but, and I don't expect people to do that, right. but you can never tell what can happen at a meeting. Yeah. Um, the other option is to, since we can, we can, this is a legal question for Lisa mm -hmm. Mead. The borrowing authority is for five million. Yes. Would it be considered a reduction in the borrowing authority or would we be authorized, since we already have the borrowing authority, to say that, for instance, we were going to rescind $4.4 .4 million of the borrowing authority? Mm -hmm. Those right. seem to be the two options. That's why it says all or a portion. Right. If so, is if we're talking about, you know, what the finance committee has recommended is that we we use six hundred thousand dollars of general stabilization of general stabilization to make up the gap between the state grant, the money we had from a previous road issue, and um, what we had to expend to fix the roads. Right. So. I, I'm hopeful that this doesn't because this is a highly hypothetical thing. I think it's a logical thing for people to vote for us to use stabilization money and pay off all these bills. Um, but mm -hmm. we will need to explain to them that we need to pay off this road repair expenditure by the end of the fiscal year. Right. We've said it a number of times. Right. So the talking points, that's why I'm asking, because the talking points on this, right. we need to be clear about what we're saying. So the first thing is, is um, this, uh, this transfer covers the remainder of expenses incurred by the town for the flooding events in July. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and this, this secures our obligation to the state that we will pay off all emergency spending by the end of this fiscal year. Right. And if Article 19 doesn't pass, then we have to decide either whether we're going to, if we pass over Article 20. That leaves our borrowing intact and we would have and, to borrow to fund by right. the end of Correct. the fiscal and then, year. And then, and then in the fall, we can rescind whatever we didn't borrow. Yeah, or we could only retain the 600,000 borrowing authority and get rid of the rest of it. Um, I'm, I think I'm in favor of um, rescinding 4.4 4. 4 million. I understand what you're saying, but I also feel optimistic that we're going to get some money between now and fall. I wouldn't risk it, but that's up to you. That's fine. And yeah, I but think I, I leave it up to you guys, whatever you no, want to do. I, mean, I, would, I, I, I would pass it over and then do it in the fall when we know everything, but if you want to do that, that's fine. Well, I'm not sure well, the, only th the only reason why I, I suggest that I'm suggest that what I'm, I am suggesting is that I believe that we're going to be doing bans for other things. So, you know, that, that our normal course of business. That, the accountant does this banning periodically, and I think she's planning to do something for in the you, fall, right? You need authorization, though, to ban. So. Well, right. We'll do bans for the library project. Right. That'll be so, our first ban in September, a, I think. But yeah. you won't. Well, here's what happens, right? So they don't allow us to do this then that's what they're, they're telling us is that they want us to borrow $600,000 to pay off this debt. It has to be paid off by right. the end. So we have to borrow before right. June 30th. Correct. Right. So I'm going to do my best to explain that if you don't approve this, what you're doing is telling us to borrow $600,000 right. to pay off a debt we have to pay off by the end of the fiscal year. Right. Um, and well, I'll explain that before this vote. Yeah. 
I think it. I don't think anybody's going to be. Be silly uh, to do against that. doing this, but right. you can never I, tell. I think they're going to, my thought is financially, it makes a lot more sense to transfer $600,000. Right. To pay our bills with money we have on hand. I was just going right. to say the money's sitting there. We're right. not getting very, I mean, we're getting interest, but not yeah. a lot of interest. And it is for the purpose of the general stabilization fund Correct. to pay bills that were unanticipated so that we balance our budget. Particularly for capital, which our roads are. Right. Right. And so... And then, of course, if we get money from the state, it goes into free cash, it gets certified, and we can pay it back. Mm -hmm. You can at the put it fall right town, back into stabilization. We can yeah. pay it, put it back in at the fall town meeting. I mean, it just. I'm not as optimistic as you are, but, yeah, but I would love to take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I, and no matter what. I mean, yeah. Trevor, no, the only no. thing you got to do is you just got to keep working. I know you do, and you're good at that. You're I, good at that. I, I just that. feel. I mean, there's $5 million sitting there that they have to pay out. It's not enough mm -hmm. for what, if, if Lemonster's appeal does not happen, it's not enough. Right. So they are going to have an additional amount. Right. And our amount is still, is still, still outstanding. And the reason why it's not 800000 is because we were overpaid in July of 21 storms. Right. Conway has been overpaid. Right. We have been underpaid. Correct. So Joe and Natalie are more than aware of that, Good. which I hope I you know. will talk about on Absolutely. Saturday. Yep. Um, and so my thought is in the supplemental budget, which happens after July 1st, unfortunately, um, we will get a pay payout that will go into free cash, we'll get it certified, and hopefully we can return it to the stabilization in the fall. Yeah, that would be great. But that would be really great. We need to kind of replenish that somehow. But I mean, so Lemon do you need us to make a decision about the number? Um, I think what we what I'm probably going to end up doing is having some notation for town officials. Yeah. About what we would do. That's why I asked the question because. Usually, in past, past motions I've seen, if something happens, then the board will pass this over. Or if something happens, then the board will do this. Right. This could be the motion. Right. We've done those types of motions. It's just a question. That's why I wanted you to talk about it, because this is a critical piece of your right. Right. Um, process. And I just I guess I'd like to send Lisa Mead a question about this. From myself, so I'm clear on it. Mm -hmm. um, I think I outlined the two options correctly. I mean, one is that we pass Article 19 and then we rescind the full amount. One is that the voters do not pass Article 6, 19, mm -hmm. and then we have to have a number because what they're telling us is that they, we're not going to have another opportunity to go to the voters and ask them. Which, which account do you want to take this money out of right. to pay this debt? Th this is really our only choice. Right. So the, my looking at this as the only choice is to figure out what is the reduced number of, what can we rescind in borrowing at this meeting? Because you still have. And if they don't pass that either, then what they're telling us is they want us to default on this debt. Correct. We still have, you know, if we borrow, we have. But I want to check that with the lawyer. Uh, I, yes. <laughs> And then I, we I have agree. to, you know, calculate the bond. Well, council. I was just going to say, you got bond council. You have this whole banding right. cost. That's another reason why we need. So to. we need to have that price worked into the six hundred thousand, right. so people can see that you are actually making us more, it's money. more money, right? By making yeah. us borrow. Mm -hmm. um, okay. All right. I think we, we know. beat it to death. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it is beat to death. The last article. Is After up 20 to the floor. is the petition, citizens' petition. Um, and Are this you, is going to be a motion from the floor. Um, is Blake, this, Blake's making this motion. Hmm? <laughs> um, is, did you get in touch with the uh, petitioner and ask her if she wanted to, to present this article? Someone so should present it. Well, the thing about it is, is I actually put. She's not a Deerfield resident. She's not I know, a Deerfield she resident, but what I did was I connected her to Dan, and they came up with an explanation that we're going to put in the guide. Yeah. But somebody's going to speak to it from the floor. Okay. Um, but she'll have to be on. And I've connected to, to that person and let them know that I can 
give them the motions, but I can't control what happens from so the floor. So is somebody from Deerfield going to be on, yes. on the floor? Okay, I was going to yes. say, because you'd have to yes. add her name it's, to the yes, front it's there. Gonna, yeah, it's a, okay. it's a, and Jessica had already, um, uh, the person that put the petition in, I don't, yeah. she had already discussed that with Dan. Okay. All so right. she knew but that she it had to be need, somebody from Deerfield. Right, she doesn't need to be listed in the front. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I, I, I sent a... a an email to Dan asking if he could give me a call about this petition because um, it's nothing to do with the select board and um, I want to know if nobody is present to present this to the citizens whether we can pass it over with no action. That's actually a legal question for Lisa. Oh yeah, well, I, I'll, I was going to check with Dan and, and, and I'll send the same email to Lisa. Or you can send the same email to Lisa. I can ask. I mean, because I, I, you know, I believe that we followed what we understood to be the law. That yes, citizens' we petition did. is properly requested with the uh, the town government, and they met all the requirements. And so we said, yes, you can put this petition on well, here. The petition was written the same in multiple towns. Right. No, I'm not worried about yeah. the language or anything. I'm saying yeah. they followed all the rules. We. We, as a select board, said, okay, they followed all the rules. It can go to the voters, but we're not, it's not part of, it's nothing that we brought forward. It's something that a citizen petition brought forward. Mm -hmm. And so that this is on the citizens who want to bring it forward. Yep. All right. Yes, and I tried to make that clear by making that connection with Dan. Good. I'm, um, I'm glad you did I've that. I appreciate also, it. You know, I I will send these. I do believe there is going to be somebody from Deerfield that's going to move this, so I don't necessarily think it's an issue. Um, but I do. I, I did want to make sure that we weren't in a situation where nobody was moving the question, because it is something that came to you as a petition. Right. Technically, you guys. I know we're obligated to put it on. I mean. They hit the number of signatures. Lisa told us to put it on, so I did. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and we can have Lisa speak to this too. Yeah, she can say um, something because to you know it's a nuance, but it's something that the citizens need to understand. You know, the select board doesn't have absolute authority to do things. We're not dictators. We're responsible to the voters. Right. So okay. you want to know whether this article can be passed over if, if, if there's no one to present it. We're not obligated to present it because. It wasn't anything that we brought forward. And I just want people to understand that we followed the law as we understood it, and that if nobody is here to present it, then we're not going to take action on it. Motion to adjourn. Is there anything else? I don't Do think you have there anything is. Anything else anybody want to hit on? Is there any topics to discuss? No, I'm good. Um, I just we're wanna... waiting on the cabinets, right, for the church still. Still waiting on the cabinets. Yeah. Sure, right. Yeah. And I uh, need to uh, ding on the only meeting house just to check to see, he, see if they're on schedule. Told me that they were supposed yeah, beginning to, of May or something. supposed to give give me a notice four weeks before because that's when he gets noticed that they're coming. Uh -huh. But he's yeah. very busy. I think it's a oh, busy it's year. been busy time of the year so, for sure. Um, you know, I'll just send him an email tomorrow just yep. to say hey. You know, um, what else did I see? Uh, I, I just oh. I did, did get a phone call from Allison at Treehouse, and she said that um, DOT did like the um, pull off uh, bus pull off oh, good. idea. Good. So that's the EAP and is still have moving forward. There to protect. Oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But when you say bus pull off, what do you mean? When, for, in, Instead of instead of having you know like the they they have a bus schedule going around to the parking lots right. to pick up the people for the race instead mm -hmm. of pulling and still like putting lot. into the parking lot and pulling out it's going to just pull off pull on the them. north end where their emergency access is anyway right and and it will be we'll like a people. bus stop people yeah. will get off. And go to the parking lot, and that's where they could pick up but if there's emergencies. Their bids well. and right. yep. sign okay. up and whatever. And then, good. if they, they presumably they're going to go back to the parking lot where runners are arriving and parking, pick them up and transfer them. And right. Uh, but what you've there. eliminated is you right. eliminated going into oh, the yeah. parking well, lot, plan. coming out. But it, had, well, it was dependent upon plan. right. It was dependent upon Mass DOT approving that, and apparently it came that's through. That's good. 
today. That's good. And so uh, it is, while they're still working on their oh yes, egress. they're yeah. they're working on the egress, um, a permanent egress as well as the emergency egress. But the initial, it, the main issue was how do you get people in and out? Yeah. Uh, with the current situation, and the current situation can be um, mitigated by having this bus pull up. Yep. And, and then they we, agreed to that. And of course, it, if you know, it's sort of already there, mm -hmm. so it's not really an issue. And I see they paved out here in front of the library. Yeah. Out yep. there, they just paved. sign that bill. Yep. Right. So that warrant's paid. So, so anything. where are we on the relish? on the church relish. So there is, I actually had a conversation with John Watney about this. I tried to set up a call with the representative from Senexo because it's a question about a contract term and I need to ask the guy about it, but I talked to John Watney about it and he understands sort of where our position is in terms of protecting the town. So I'm gonna follow up with Sean Delaney as soon as I get a chance to, he hasn't responded to my request. Yeah. So he's probably out in the field. So I expect to hear from him tomorrow. If I don't hear from him in the morning, I'll give him a call. Okay, thanks. Because we, I'm, I, I, I want to make sure. I mean, this is emergency repair, and we really. Well, the contract piece is a is a different part of it. So we need to get it done. But I also want to make sure that we protect the town. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Nobody I'm, wants to not protect. The I have town. a problem with that, but I want that church relishes repair. Well, the other thing is, is right now we're at crunch time for town meeting, and some yep. of this documentation yep. oh, yeah. has to happen. Absolutely, absolutely. So. <laughs> Casey, we understand the pressure you're under. Um, I know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, anything else? I, I'm going to make a motion. I saw the, uh, they, they've got the um, chargers here done. Yep. It looks like they raked out and everything, yep. so that looks all finished. Thank um, Chris. And then I'm hoping they're going to mow out front pretty soon. It's looking mm. a little tall. Yeah, the rabbits don't seem to do a good job. No, they don't the eat, eat it evenly. Um, <laughs> They've got the big front teeth, you know? Maybe we need baby goats. <laughs> baby goats? There you go. Right. At least they're cute. Maybe yeah. we could fund Lori, that at town Lori, meeting. Lori, I, I'm pretty sure them. my dogs want to visit with baby goats, but yeah. I'm just saying. All right. Baby yeah. goat yoga. Mm -hmm. Yes, baby goat yoga out front. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank, Thank you, you all everybody. very much.